Well, hello and welcome to this uh, workshop on diagnosing adenomyosis with ultrasound. I'm Tina Tellum. I'm a consultant in the Department of Gynecology and Obstetrics at the University Hospital of Norway. And I finished my thesis with diagnosis of adenomyosis. Well, what I hear really a lot is that you can't really see adenomyosis with ultrasound. And obviously this is wrong. Maybe that was correct in the 70s, but with ultrasound evolving, this is not correct anymore. And furthermore, MRI and transvaginal ultrasound have the same diagnostic performance uh, for the diagnosis. And we looked at a lot of studies last year and published um, a review and meta-analysis on, on the topic where we could see that there was no difference. Well, some people say no, none of the modalities are uh, really good and that's true. There might be better clinical tests known in the world. The sensitivity is about 74 to 84% and the specificity is 76 to 88%, which is not perfect, but besides the point that's the only non-invasive tool that we have, um, it will also depend on how, you, how your experience is. And most of you have a lot of experience with ultrasound already. So with some little nudges, you might be able to see a lot more. So what can we see? We have to divide into direct signs and indirect signs of adenomyosis in ultrasound. And the direct signs, they are um, ectopic glands that can have, but do not have to have hemorrhage. And they are shown as hyperechoic foci and eyelids, myometrial cysts, and also the irregular invasion of the junctional zone by adenomyosis. The indirect signs are secondary signs due to muscular hypertrophy that adenomyosis causes. And by that, the change of the, the, the shape of the uterus will change, and also it can cause fan-shaped echoing. For all of the signs, sometimes they're really subtle and then it's not so easy to really be sure is there adenomyosis or not. But the more prominent the sign is, the safer is the diagnosis. So let's jump right into it. And here you can see um, a uterus with a cavity here. And in this anterior wall, there's a lot going on. Hyperechoic foci, hypoechoic myometrial cysts. And this is a massive case of adenomyosis in a 43-year-old woman. And even if you don't know what this is, you should react on this, that this is not normal. She was mistaken to have an endometrioid cancer. And you can see this, the endometrial cavity is still quite normal. So this is, of course, not the case. This is adenomyosis. This was a massive case. Here we have a much more subtle appearance with smaller invasions and hyperechoic foci. And that can be a little bit more tricky to see what's going on. You can see here in the posterior part and those areas. And there, 3D ultrasound can be really helpful. And yes, you see a rendered image of the sagittal plane. Also, rendering is not only the coronal plane, but it's also sagittal plane you see the junctional zone and here the invasion that was also then proved in histopathology to be adenomyosis. So 3D can help you a lot. In those two coronal images, you can see the small arrows here showing foci of adenomyosis that invaded uh, to the myometrium can be tricky though, though it's very sensitive. You will find a lot of cases with adenomyosis. Uh, many things can go on in the junctional zone, and especially with rendering and the rendering techniques, you can have a lot of artifacts. So you have to get used to the image and how adenomyosis should look like. There's a little tip, um, if you, especially when you're just starting out with 3D, which you should if you're not doing it already, look for a normal junctional zone. That's 
um, for a starter much better. You see how clearly the marked the anemometric cavity is, and also here, no invasion, and that can exclude adenomyosis with a high certainty if you don't have any other findings on 2D either. It has a specificity of up to 92%. In our study, we had a low sensitivity because we had so many women with a lot of adenomyosis. So there was some bias, but in a normal population, this will really help you. You can also see this by 2D. Here you can see already some cysts that should hint you. And here is the endometrial cavity. What is this there? Yes, this is not a part of the cavity. This is invasion, clearly also seen in the coronal view in 3D. Those hyperechoic spots, they, if they're really subtle and small, you can be tricked. It can be fibrosis and it can be what's more, it can be also vessels. And there, because vessels are also hyperechogenic, but you can follow them. And you can also use power Doppler to um, see them better. And the volusone machines, they have a nice function that's called radiant flow or also slow flow function. And the slow flow will help you to really discriminate between uh, foci of adenomyosis and vessels. And this is also the same case for endometrial my myometrial cysts, like here, there is no power Doppler flow on it. Here's a vessel, and here's also a, an oval and a body that looks quite the same. But they are mostly located in the isthmical part of the uterus. Let's go over to the indirect signs. As I said, this is muscular hypertrophy caused by adenomyosis, and there you do not necessarily see any foci, and they call cause a fan-shaped echoing like this. You see those beams of echo. They can also be altered with echo enhancement. So it looks whiter. But there also be careful. You can confuse them with myoma. They have this classic image as well. And also with vessels. Vessels have a circular layer in their wall too. Hypertrophy can also change the shape of the uterus. It can cause muscular, um, it can cause it from coming ovular and normal to round. And here you see a small and round uterus with an anterior posterior diameter of about five centimeters. And here you have a really enlarged globular uterus with about 10 centimeters in diameter. The shape is different, but you have also some diagnostic pitfalls. You can have small disseminated myoma that you don't um, really see if your resolution and your settings on the ultrasound are not good enough. You can also cause that by the use of oral contraceptives with um, estrogen. And there you have to be especially aware of with a smaller you try. Um, if the uterus is really enlarged and round, it's more likely to be adenomyosis. And also with deep infiltrating endometriosis in the cul-de-sac, the shape can be distorted with a question mark sign and then it could look round. Asymmetric walls are also caused by adenomyosis and by the invasion of the tissue and then muscular hypertrophy. But there also we can have contractions that are physiological, especially around um, ovulation. And um, those will disappear again. So if you're not certain, then you can just wait a little bit, like a minute or two, and then it should be resolved again. So in conclusion, the best science in terms of specificity, so how where you can really be safe are my material cysts. And large hyperechoic foci in the mymetrium, and also an enlarged and globular uterus. The best sign in terms of sensitivity, where but where you possibly have some false positives, is the invasion or changes at the junctional zone, which is best seen in 3D. And I would like to end my talk with a quote from Roald Dahl, the witches. Um, 
where the boy asked his grandmother, are those certain signs? No, she said, you can never be completely sure, but you can be almost certain. And that is the same for using ultrasound to diagnose adenomyosis. Thank you very much.